So we welcome you to Valley View Baptist Church in North Ogden, Utah, and to our uh, YouTube friends around the world, welcome to being here. And as it's good to see our couple of younger folks here with us today too, and families. So that's uh, that's great, Jeff. Good to good to see you. So so as always, we are. Speaking of our exceeding abundantly able God, reference from Ephesians 3, 20 and, and 21. And we must remember that faith defeats fear. Faith defeats stress. Faith defeats anxiety. Faith defeats discouragement. And faith defeats depression. Yes, God is still in the miracle business. Yes, God is still on his throne. Yes, God is still all-knowing, all-powerful, everywhere present at the same time. So with that in mind, let's look to the Lord. Heavenly Father, as we <clears throat> come together to offer the message of what you've laid upon my heart, I pray that it go forth in the power of the Spirit be received in that same power. And may we just be drawn close to you, Lord, and you, you be honored and glorified. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Well, I do have something I wanted to share uh, with you. Uh, and it's uh, <clears throat> from A.J. McDougall. He said, he will be present when the trial comes. There's no misfortune in your life, no trial, no sorrow, but that it seems it's long in advance of your experience of it. And though it be as severe as was the sale of the Son of God for 50 pieces of silver, he will present to, he will be present to support you. And when the trial comes, I will not murmur when small things go wrong, when plans of mine long cherish weaken and fall. When hushed upon my lips is life's glad song, when joys long sought have vanished past recall, God knows, God knows. I am not weakly weep, the hours away, I will not weep the hours away, though morrow's waters flow around my feet, though life's fair sky be shadowed, laden gray, though rule, rule be mine altar, limited of roses sweet. God knows, God knows. I will not drop from weary hands, toil-worn, the task unfinished, though a burden sore. Though extra, no earth's fair pleasures from my grips be torn, though sorrow's keenest pain, my cup brim o'er. God knows, God knows. God knows what we're going through. And so, um, and he go, he's there with us. I was, the scripture over in Isaiah just rings in my mind these last, last few days. But we need to, to move on. And as I mentioned, we're going to talk about the quenching water from John 4, 1 through 14. No human being has ever been satisfied with the things of this world. Adam and Eve tasted of the world and found that it didn't satisfy. Down through the ages, men have sipped of the wine of every earthly pleasure, but have found in them no permanent satisfaction. The Bible speaks of the pleasures of sin. To the worldly man, there are some pleasures in sin, but the same verse tells us 
that they are but for a season. To the worldly man there are but for they do not last. Let me just try that again. The same verse tells us that they are but for a season. That is true. Worldly pleasures do not last. The flowers of earthly joy bloom today, but tomorrow they will fade away and die. Many great men have achieved prominence. They have gained wealth and fame and power, but many of them have testified to the fact that these things didn't satisfy. During the World War, a number of our men were cast adrift upon the open sea in, a rubber, in rubber rafts. There was water all around them, millions of gallons of it, but the salt sea water did not satisfy. They were worse off when they drank of it, and some of them died because of drinking, of drinking it. Today, many people are seeking happiness and contentment. They are surrounded by worldly pleasures. They drink of these things. They spend all of their time in worldly pursuits, only to find that when they have gained the world, it didn't satisfy. Is there no real satisfaction for man? Must he forever run through the world, chasing a will of the whips and being forever disappointed? No, there is one who can truly satisfy the human heart. There is one who never disappoints. There is one at whose right hand there are pleasures forevermore. There is one who can give to you the water of life, and if you drink of it, you'll never thirst again. He bears the name of Jesus, blessed, blessed Jesus, the Son of God, the Savior of men, the satisfier of human hearts. So I want to share with you this morning from the message or from the scriptures, the water of life. And I've simply titled it, The Quenching Water. It's amazing what it quenches. And I'll try to share some of those thoughts uh, with you. Well, as the scene opens, folks, uh, uh, which Dave read a little earlier, we see Jesus leaving Judea and going to, toward Galilee. We read that he must needs go through Samaria. Try to, recall, try to recall the geographical positions of these three countries. Galilee was in the north, Judea was in the south, and Samaria was directly in between these two countries. That case gives you kind of a bird's eye view of the area that we're, that we're talking, talking about. <clears throat> so it was only natural to go through Samaria to get to Galilee, but the Jews never took that direct route. They crossed the Jordan to the east, then travel northwest, then travel back over the Jordan westward into Galilee. This meant that they had to go many miles out of their way. Why did they do that? Why did they do that? It was because of their pride and prejudice. They had no dealings with the Samaritans. They considered them as heathens and unclean. They didn't want to defile themselves by touching even their country. This reminds us of some of the race prejudice which prevails today. But Jesus Christ, who himself was a Jew, had no such prejudice. Amen. 
He stood out on his journey straight through Samaria. Why did he feel that he simply had to go through Samaria? In the first place, he was saying to the Jewish people, you Jews are filled with prejudice. I have no prejudice. I am not a respecter. I am not a respecter of persons. I love the Samaritans even as I love you. Yes, Jesus loves everyone. All people are alike to him. He permits no prejudice to come between himself and any soul on earth. Again, in going through Samaria, he didn't come to save just one nation or one group of people, but he came to die for all men and to bring salvation to every person. Hallelujah. So he's saying, the Son of Man came to seek and to save the Samaritans just as much as he did the Jews. Yep. He loved them all. What, what's 316? What's the first phase? For God so loved the world. Amen. Okay? And so, oh, we have prejudice today. We need, we need to get right with God in that area of responsibility. And so, uh, in line with this truth, I believe that from all eternity past, Jesus had an appointment in Samaria. God doesn't do things on hindsight and that. He, he plans millions of years ahead, okay? It's all planned out, okay? We're not gonna change his prophecies. We're not gonna change his, his word. He's all filled out completely and always, he has the invitation, the invite for you to come yeah. to him. And so it's there, it's there uh, for us. So a sinful woman there needed to receive pardon and purity. A city there needed salvation. There are no accidents in Jesus's life. God planned his life down to the minutest detail. God planned for him to meet this sinful woman and to change her life, even though the woman knew nothing of this appointment. So the Gaither folks, they, they sing a song, we have an on-time God. Yeah, yeah. Now let me tell you, this is an on-time experience and a story, true story in, in the Bible, Amen. okay? Where two people, Jesus Christ as man and this lady, they needed water. And think about it now, Jesus as a Jew, he irritated the Jews when he went in the, over to Samaria. And then he said, give me to drink. She says back, what are you asking me? You're a, you're a Jew and I'm a Samaritan. Well, how did he say? Drink of my water, okay? Drink of my water and you'll never thirst again. What did he take? Isn't that an awesome story of witnessing? Okay, Jesus didn't necessarily have to have the water, but he wanted to share the water of life with this Samaritan. Amen. And it made a difference in her life and it made a difference as we get further into, into the book of John, the rest of that fourth, fourth chapter. It, it made a difference with her. Why? Yes. She became a witness for Jesus Christ. Amen. All from that long walk, or shorter walk, I should say, uh, through to uh, Samaria. So anyway, I thought that was, that was just 
interesting. There's so many uh, uh, things there. Okay. Aren't you glad that in the plans of Jesus, he came your way and brought salvation and hope? Yep. Hope to you. Yeah, I remember his plan. I didn't know anything about it, but I wanted to join the Air Force. I joined the Air Force. I went to uh, Biloxi, Mississippi for uh, tech training, but before that I went to San Antonio for, uh, <coughs> for basic training. And then after these, I was shipped to Okinawa. I didn't realize that Jesus Christ was the captain of the ship. <laughs> so we went on to Okinawa and we were assigned different barracks and different, different things. And then being there about six or seven months, there was a sign on the bulletin board that I could get a three day pass if I wanted to go to a Christian retreat. You wouldn't find those kind of words today on a, uh, on a billboard in a, in a, uh, at a military base. Right, my friends, in the military there? Yeah. And so, but I could get a three-day pass. And I've mentioned this before, it just seems like it's one I need to tell you again about how God's plan, just like for that lady of Samaritan, he had a plan that he would come to me. He searched me. I wasn't searching for, for him. And so, yes, I, I found Jesus Christ. Or I should say, really, Jesus Christ found me. On that. And he, you see, folks, this was his eternal plan regarding me, I think regarding this church, and regarding other things that, that I, I did. You guys think you're all here by choice. <laughs> <laughs> he had something to do with it, yeah. right? Amen. I, I think uh, I have a, a, a note here to. Uh, about, uh, or we say we, we found Jesus. You know, you know, folks, what really happened? Jesus found us. Yeah. Yes. Okay? Because salvation's all about Him. Amen. Okay? How can, how can it be about me when I didn't even know His plan to even go to Oakland? I didn't even know how to spell it <laughs> when I was assigned to it. Okay? And yet, I can look back and here he is, here's his plan. All I had to do was accept it, yep. which, which, I, which I did. And ended up for 40 years in North Hogan, Utah, Valley View Baptist, yeah. Baptist oh, yeah. Church. I would have never thought that I would be here that long. In fact, my plans, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You think God has a sense yeah. of humor? Huh. Tell him your plans. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> so it's uh, and so I <clears throat> I didn't know. My original plan was just to be here uh, in a in a transition mode to with one pastor uh, re re resigning and moving to Arizona. <clears throat> And I thought, and that asked me if I would uh, be the pastor, and I said, yes, I, I will, but I don't know how long. Well, I still don't know how long. <laughs> but my, my point being, uh, aren't you really glad in the plans of Jesus? Yes. You look at your own life. He came your way and brought salvation and hope to you. That's the best day, the happiest day of your life. The day when Jesus washed your sins Hallelujah. away. Thank you, Jesus. Okay? 
So, well, let me get back to the journey a little bit, okay? So on this journey, he came to Sychar, and just outside the city, he stopped at Jacob's well. Jacob had given this well to his son Joseph 1,700 years before this time. Down through the centuries, this well had slacked the first of thousands with its water. Even as now, you can see that the Jews stamped the mark of their own civilization wherever they went. We're told that Jesus sat down being tired from his journey. This speaks to us of the humanity of Jesus. He was the Holy One from God, but he had a body like ours. Sometimes we don't realize that, what he went through, the beatings, the thorns, finally the death. Yes, he came to do that. He came to do that. He was the Holy One from God. He knew the same hunger, thirst, and weariness that we know. He could walk on the water, calm the storm with a word, give sight to the blind man and bring a dead man back to life, yet he, he became tired and hungry as he walked the dusty roads of Samaria. Doesn't that give us a picture of what he, what he did yep. and where he went and now the result of it? This evidence of his humanity brings him very close to us. We know that he suffered as we do and that he can help us in the time of need. If we have been through some experience, we can help others <clears throat> who go through the same experience. Jesus lived as a man. He went through all the sorrows and troubles of life. And he knows how to help us when we need help. In a few minutes, Jesus was alone for the disciples had gone into the city to buy some food. There were several of them. Why didn't one or two of them stay with Jesus? Again, we see the divine purpose of working working out. He needed to be alone so that he could pour out his heart to a poor sinner who needed help. And result, she needed him. Yes. So in the distance, a woman was approaching from the city. Who was she? What kind of woman was she? Why did she come to the well at noon instead of early in the morning or in the evening when the other woman of the city came to draw water? Her name is not given. She was a sinful woman. She had had five husbands and the man with whom she was living at this time was not her husband. She came at noonday because she knew that no one else would be at the well at that hour. She didn't dare come out of the regular time with the good woman of the city. She came for one purpose, to draw water. She had no thought of anything else. She had no idea that she would meet Jesus, no idea that she would be converted. She just wanted to get some water and, and leave. And she came at a time where she wouldn't have stand in line for to get get the water. So <clears throat> that was her only only thought. Probably she took up a pitcher and said, "I'll go and get some water. There'll be no one at the well at this time of the day." One she knew all about her. One who knew her deep her deep need. One who could save her and transfer, transform her 
and put peace in her soul and hope in her heart. When the woman arrived at the well, Jesus broke the precedent of the Jews. The Jews never spoke to the Samaritans. But Jesus looked on her only as what? A lost soul. That was what Jesus saw. And that's what God's plan was to go for Jesus to cross the border, if you will, into Samaria to meet this. Can you see how far reaching this decision was of Jesus to walk into Samaria? Mm -hmm. It opened really the heart throbs of other Samaritans that found God through Jesus Christ and through that lady. That lady that had five wives, excuse me, had five husbands. Uh, Amen. Yeah, yeah. And, and she was living in sin. What happened? She met a loving Savior that knew more about her than she knew about herself. Because he, he mentioned, you know, re about her to her and stunned her, I think, for, for a few moments. And then the conversation began about love, about love and, and con concern. And so, well, uh, now, you know, the lady, it seems to me, kind of seemed a bit sarcastic. She said, our father Jacob dug this well. Through the years, we have found plenty of water here. Do you know of a better well? Are you greater than Jacob, one of, one of our greatest men? But Jesus did not answer her question. He pointed to the well and said, if you drink of this water, you'll thirst again. If you drink of the water that I give you, you will never thirst. You'll have a well of water sprinkling, sprinkling up within yourself unto eternal life. What is Jesus saying here, folks? He is saying, in effect, go out and live for the world. It will not satisfy. You will just keep on looking for happiness. But give me your heart and live for me and you'll find true happiness. Amen. Kind of paraphrasing the scripture there. Jesus is simply saying, if you drink this water, you will have to come back for more. If you take what I have to give you, you will be fully satisfied forever. Hallelujah. He said that the believer will have a spring of water bubbling up within him unto eternal life. Now there's a difference between a well and a spring, yes. okay? I just, I was thinking as I was preparing this message, you know, right over here, they call it the stump, yes. okay? Hey, it's not a well, it's a spring. Yep. People drive in there, fill up their, their heavy water, uh, five gallon uh, bottles of, of water and People are in and out of there all the time, okay? That's a, <clears throat> not a, a, a well, but it is a spring. Yeah. And Jesus is talking about an eternal spring. Hallelujah. It's what? Faith in him, mm -hmm. okay? The water will never run dry, no. I've seen times, folks, a couple of times here, some years back, we had a, a storm that hit and the water came down uh, on the surface, right down and around and down to that, <coughs> to that uh, stump, okay? 
and there was surface water just flowing over. It was raining so hard. I, I remember uh, my, the garbage can was down on the street uh, half a block away. And I was, it was raining like crazy. And I said, I gotta get that garbage can back. So I, I did, I went down. It was like, it was like walking against the storm or against the wind because everything was going this way and I was trying to get the, the garbage can uh, back and, and uh, I, got a little, I got a little scared. <laughs> My goodness, it was thunder and lightning and uh, just roaring uh, water uh, down there. And I thought, you know, I can see this, but all underneath, is what? Amazing grace. Amen. You know, so I, when I we finally got it done, <clears throat> I, called, I called my wife, Leah, and I said, it's really been stormy. I, 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 I'm just gonna uh, <clears throat> sit here and talk to the Lord for a little while because it was such a nasty, nasty storm. And it flooded things all the way down the, the road to uh, 2600. It was, it was amazing, uh, Thorn. But I, yeah, I remember going after that garbage can and uh, it was pretty, pretty amazing. So as I think about <clears throat> the spring, as opposed to the well, the spring never dries. Our love for God can never dry. He won't let it, okay? We can get distance from him, but he's still gonna tag along. Mm -hmm. But we lose a lot of blessing if we do uh, other, otherwise. So, yes, Jesus, isn't he really saying here that if you take what? he has to give, you will have an inner spring of Christian joy and peace and hope, a spring that never runs dry, a spring that is a source of blessing both to yourself and to, to others. Now, I'm gonna get personal for a few minutes. Uh, and I've, Just uh, when my daughter called me Friday morning and said that she, she had this virus. And I, I got emotional. But just that earlier that day, I had read a devotion in Dr. David Jeremiah's book, The Journey. It's just daily devotions. And I, I said, Ruthie, hun, uh, in my devotion, just a, a little, while, little while before, before she called and I said, I, it just touched me when you shared with me about what they've found in your your life. And I said, would you, would you mind if I read it to you? And she said, oh no, Dad, please. So this is my devotion for that morning. Called Empty Cups from Dr. David Jeremiah. And he quoted Jeremiah 2, 13. For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living water, and hewn themselves cisterns, broken cisterns that can hold no water. In his 17th century devotional classic, A Serious Call, 
to a devout and holy life. William Law described a thirsty man who kept holding up one empty cup after another to his lips. No matter how beautiful the cups were, Law observed, and no matter how glittery and golden they seemed, the poor man only grew thirstier while lifting them to his mouth, for empty cups cannot quench the thirst. Many people today are seeking inner fulfillment and emotional peace by lifting one empty cup after another to their lips. But Jesus said, if anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. And out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. John 7, 37 and 38 in part. Without the risen Christ in our homes and hearts, we're missing the kind of encouragement we need to keep going. He is the true source of encouragement. And as we partake of the living waters of His grace, we'll overflow with true encouragement into the lives of others. Put down your empty cup and drink richly of Christ. And then this, this statement by William Law, awaken your soul into a zealous desire of that solid happiness which is only to be found in, re, in recourse to God. Well, we were both crying when we got through that, but we got through that. We turned it all over to God. And so that's, I just wanted to fit that in. That's back here and I go here and just for a, a few more minutes. The rest of the story is the winning of a wicked woman. She found Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. You know, isn't it amazing? And we look at this and what traveling Jesus did and what traveling the lady did and what and the exact time to, to uh, meet each other. And she was very defensive at first. How many times do we witness to people and they get defensive right off? Okay. She got a little defensive, you know. Well, Jacob did this and Jacob did that, you know, and and a little arrogant, but he just, he just humbly said, drink of the water that I'll give and you'll never, never thirst. And so, uh, uh, you know, folks, I, I need to finish up, but I got just a couple of things I want to share. One, we are not saved by giving something to God but by receiving something from God. Amen. You think about that, okay? You know, this, uh, well, if I do this, you know, God will do this and, and that. No, no. What, I, I just, uh, a lot of people just really believe, and a lot of these televangelists uh, do it, uh, they think that they can be saved by giving something. Well, he wants to exchange a life or a good deed to a material gift from heaven. We're saved when we open up our hearts and receive Christ and all that he brings with him. When one of England's queen was dying, she cried out, millions for an inch of time, but you can't buy this life, no matter how rich you are, and you can't buy eternal life. God, God's not selling heaven. He's giving it away. Amen. So if we think that and, and what 
what I've just shared about that we're saved when we open up our hearts and receive Christ and all that he brings with him. Okay? We get these little sentences. I hope they're really touching you because they sure touch me. Oh, so the minute you turn your back on sin, the minute you give your heart to Jesus Christ, God's gift of everlasting life is yours. Hallelujah. Now that's an amen, isn't it? Right. Hey, yes. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Romans 6, Thank 20, you, Jesus. 23. So, uh, so the conversation changes. What did she say? Give me, I'll take it, give me, give me this water. And Jesus replies, go and get your husband and then come back to me. She stands there condemned. Her sin had been brought to light. She doesn't understand, but certainly we do today. Before you can drink of the water of life, you can receive, before you can receive God's blessing, your sins must be brought out and rooted out. Now in humility, we hear her say, I have no husband. And Jesus said, I know that. You have had five husbands and the one with whom you are now living is not your husband. Here we see the perfect knowledge of Jesus Christ. He knows everything about her, though he has never spoken to the woman before. He knows all about us too. Don't try to hide anything from God. Hey, that doesn't work. It doesn't uh, work. Well, so, Anyway, I need to, to close, but I just would close with, with this statement. And it's a follow-up the next day on, on my devotion the following day. It says from Isaiah 43.2, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow the, you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, nor shall the flame scorch you. Well, this is quite short, and I'll close with this. This is a devotion from that same, the next day, actually. It says, Anyone who has seen a, a rampaging river or a burning house knows the terror of flood and flame. Boy, we've seen it on the news the last few days, haven't we? Over in Hawaii and uh, the floods close by us down in uh, Cedar City and what's going on uh, uh, with that uh, hurricane on the California, on the California coast. So, it says the destructive power of fire and water is dreadful to see. Yet these are the dramatic images Isaiah used to describe our own trials and troubles in life. The Lord hasn't promised to keep us out of hardship, but he has given us two great promises to sustain us when we're in it. He will be with us and our troubles will not overwhelm us I will be with you, they shall not overflow you. Remember how the Lord brought the Israelites through the waters of the Red Sea in Exodus 14, and how he stood with Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fiery furnace of Daniel 3. If a problem is pressing down on you today, claim Isaiah 43, 2, which is when you pass through the waters. Uh, etc. Picture the Lord as though he were really beside you, for he is. Trust him. 
and keep you from being swept away or consumed by your circumstances, for he has promised that his grace is sufficient. And then a quote from John Keith. When through fiery trials thy pathway shall lie, by grace all sufficient shall be thy supply. Amen. So my friends, particularly out there in YouTube land, it's a simple process to change your life. It's a simple process to get on the road to heaven and eternity with Jesus. It's an easy road because it's all paved by the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ when he died on the cross. So, scripture says that we're all sinners. Yes, we are. But we can be saved from that sin by just asking Jesus Christ to come in to our life, forgive us of our sins, and be let him be your savior. So it's a simple prayer. You try it. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we're grateful. I'm grateful, Lord, for the words from Dr. Jeremiah uh, regarding, regarding life and the problems and the challenges. And thank you for the precious story of the sinful woman who became a Christian lady have I listening to Jesus and thank you Jesus for making that trip and yes it was a tiring trip you're human and so I just pray now for anyone that doesn't know Jesus Christ that's hearing this you need Jesus just call upon him he'll answer you and so we're just grateful for all that you, all that you are, Lord, and all that you mean to us. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Well, that kind of concludes our message from down to YouTube land, wherever that, that is. I was talking uh, last evening to um, Melanie Fike, who uh, she and her husband were uh, part of this church some some years uh, ago and she says what are you going to preach on tomorrow pastor and I says well I'm going to talk about some holy water <laughs> 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 I hope I got it across but that yeah. was just that simple phrase anyway uh, we'd love to hear from you folks it's just Valley View Baptist Church Post Office Box 12653, Ogden, Utah, 84412. Hey, thanks for listening. Thanks for sharing. God bless. Love you.